This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. And I'm Juan Gonzalez. Welcome to all of our listeners and viewers around the country and around the world. For the second time this month, a Guatemalan child has died in custody of U.S. Customs and Border Pro uh, Protection. Eight-year-old Felix Gomez Alonso died in New Mexico on Christmas Eve after being detained since December 18th. Earlier in the day, he had been diagnosed with a common cold, given ibuprofen and antibiotics, and released. But the boy continued to become more ill throughout the day, becoming nauseous and vomiting. He was sent back to the same hospital, but fell unconscious along the way. He was pronounced dead just before midnight Christmas morning. This follows the death of a seven-year-old indigenous Guatemalan girl, Jacqueline Cal Maquin, who died on December 8th, two days after she and her father presented themselves at the border in a bid for asylum. Meanwhile, the Supreme Court has rejected President Trump's asylum ban, which attempted to deny asylum to anyone entering the country from outside of a legal point of entry. Supreme Court Chief Justice John Roberts joined the liberal wing of the court in the 5-4 to four <laughs> vote on Friday. Justice Ginsburg voted from her hospital bed. The case was brought by the American Civil Liberties Union, the Southern Poverty Law Center and the Center for Constitutional Rights. We're joined now by CCR's legal director, Bahar Azmi. It's great to have you with us again, Bahar. Explain this lawsuit. So this lawsuit was— That was decided by the Supreme Court. Right. The lawsuit was initially filed uh, the day that the Trump administration uh, promulgated a regulation and an executive order that attempted to bar people from uh, eligibility for asylum if they enter outside a port of entry. Um, and what the lawsuit said is that this regulation clearly violates the plain terms of a 38-year-old statute, the Refugee Act from 1980, that specifically says individuals can apply for asylum no matter where they enter, which reflects the basic reality and the international law surrounding um, asylum law, which recognizes that people who are fleeing persecution do not and cannot calculate precisely where to enter in order to seek refuge. And so this principle reflects the basic humanitarian notion that people who enter, wherever they enter, shall be allowed to apply for asylum. So the Supreme Court left the decision striking down the regulation in place um, as it plainly violates the law. And now, this uh, President Trump had uh, earlier dismissed the lower court decision by Judge Tiger, uh, mm -hmm. uh, claiming this was an Obama judge uh, yeah. that was making this decision. But now we have the full 5-4 uh, vote in the Supreme Court upholding that. That's right. And and um, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, in a majority opinion written by uh, Jay Bybee, who is a Bush appointee, also affirmed— Known uh, for the torture memos. Yes, among other things. That's right. Um, so. Um, it's a little surprising and concerning that there are even four votes to reconsider the um, lower court's decision, um, because it would seem that the law is very clear and a conservative would look at the regulation and look at the statute and see that the executive branch cannot simply rewrite a congressional statute with a, you know, a flip of the pen. So, you have Judge Roberts, the Chief Justice mm -hmm. Roberts, um, siding with the liberals, and Justice Ginsburg voting from her hospital bed at Memorial Sloan Kettering. Yes. Um, yeah, quite, quite dramatic. Uh, and Judge Kavanaugh siding with um, the other uh, very conservative members of the court. Um, and so, um, but, you know, I think Judge Roberts presumably sees his role as an institutionalist now in upholding both the appearance and the integrity of the court around questions of the rule of law. But maybe doesn't want it to be called the Kavanaugh court. Uh, perhaps as well, yeah, in taking control of, of the institution. Now, this issue of the ports of entry, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, clearly the Trump administration is making it even more difficult day by day for anyone to apply for asylum at a port of entry because they're making the waiting lines so long. But what is the difference mm -hmm. between entering uh, illegally and seeking asylum versus going through a port of entry. Well, that, that's a very important point, Juan. So they they passed this, they in, 
enacted this regulation out of a stated desire to, quote, channel people to ports of entry, to create incentives as if that could exist for, for desperate refugees. Um, but at the same time, at ports of entry, they are blocking the application process to a trickle. And so migrants are stuck in uh, very dangerous locations uh, like uh, Laredo, Nueva uh, Laredo or Tijuana. Um, uh, um, or Juarez, which have endemic violence and, and gang presence, um, and being forced to wait weeks. Um, and people are dying there as well as a result of the Trump administration's deterrence policy. Which brings us to the death of this little boy, mm -hmm. eight-year-old Felix Gomez Alonso, mm -hmm. once again in New Mexico, just mm -hmm. as uh, Jacqueline Call died on December 8th, as uh, she and her father, and this time, um, Felix and his dad uh, were in Border Patrol custody. He was brought there December. He came over the border December 18th. He's been in custody for about a week. Uh, this is a second child to mm -hmm. die. Mm -hmm. What more do you know about this? You know, I don't, I don't know all of the, the details, and apparently there's an investigation to be taken, but I do think we know several things. First, people, in, uh, including people with children, make this journey not as the right would have it, uh, to exploit the American immigration system, but out of genuine desperation to flee horrific violence or crushing degradation and, and poverty. Second, the, the journey is, in fact, very dangerous and arduous, um, which reflects, the, in fact, the desperation people feel um, to cross from, say, Guatemala, El Salvador, through Mexico um, into safety of the United States. And, and third, and perhaps most importantly, the product of these and other uh, deaths on the border, on both sides of the border, comes from the Trump administration policy of deterrence. They want to make it as difficult as possible for individuals to enter the country and, at some level, are satisfied about reports of um, horrific conditions on both sides of the border um, and deaths. And as the U.N. Special Rapporteur noted, the other piece of this is that children are being held in adult jails, um, what migrants called icebox, because they're freezing. Um, and all of this is intentional. Um, not, not this death in particular, but it's part of a system designed to inflict maximum suffering and therefore keep uh, migrants out of this country. And we're talking about something like 15,000 now uh, young people are uh, in uh, in detention somewhere with Customs and Border Patrol, and uh, uh, this is an enormous number. It's an enormous number, and, and you pair that with uh, the family separation policy and, and the asylum ban. Again, it's of a, of a, of a piece to criminalize basic refugee laws or basic refugee protections in a way that's scandalous and in violation of the most basic international and humanitarian law protections. I mean, this story of the of Felix, um, who dies in custody, this is in the midst of the government shutdown. Thousands of Border Patrol are working without pay, so there's enormous stress on mm -hmm. the system. Trump uh, speaks on Christmas, um, tweets endlessly, never once mentions the death of this child, nor the death of Jacqueline. Mm -hmm but treats about the wall endlessly mm -hmm. and about, quote, border security. Yeah, I mean, we can't expect any, any sort of empathy to cross the um, megalomaniac's brain. Um, and um, he would presumably see this as, a, a, you know, um, a consequence of um, the, the, the child's doing rather than a consequence of his administration's policies. Well, we're going to be joined by a four-year-old child who's trying to see her mother, who had mm -hmm. been granted a visa, um, uh, a Yemeni mother, mm -hmm. but under Trump's Muslim ban, that was revoked. And you've brought a lawsuit in that case. We're going to be talking about that later in the broadcast. We want to thank you for being with us now. Rich um, Bahar Azmi is a legal director of the Center for Constitutional Rights. When we come back, first, though, we'll be be joined by Richard Wolff, the well-known economist, talking about the country's economy right now. Stay with us.